All right, next step, we're going to add our first layer of modeling. Um, I used a purple color. My labels have since washed off. I think it's called dioxanine number four. It's kind of a lavender purple color. And my water is already pre-mixed, but it wasn't going to be enough for this, so I added thinner. So I'm going to add more color to this. And by water, I mean odorless paint thinner, not water. These are oil-based paints. And I'm looking for kind of a opaque type texture, kind of milky. And when I pull the paint up on the jar lid, it kind of looks a little bit, I don't know, it keeps the paint there like a milky texture would, but not so thick that it's like glue. We're going to give this paint a try. I just blopped it on my kit. Let me give this paint a try on the back of the neck where it won't be as visible. And I always swoosh my jar around and and take the paint, tip it up on the lid, take the paint off the top of the area of the jar so that it doesn't have like a full bath of the completely wet stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure this is not going to be thick enough, so I'm going to add a little bit more. That's why we do it on the back of the neck so it doesn't look too dark or too light when we're... We have room to flub it and make it blend in. They want to be able to see it. I can see that there's holes in it, but I can't see the color purple. Um, and I want to see a tiny bit of that purple left behind. I'm going to wipe that first layer off so I can try again. There you go. Can you see the purple? You can see a little bit of the purple left behind. That's what I'm looking for. I don't want it to be so purple that it sticks out like a sore thumb. And you want those little holes to be there, so don't cover every single inch or every single hole. You don't want to go over it and over it and over it until it's solid. We call that a wash, and this is a model. So we're going to leave those little holes and that builds up the skin texture that we're looking for to make it look realistic. Now it's strange looking on the top of the head where it's been rooted. So you'll really get to see it when we get to the face. You can see it on the fresh blank stuff. I'm going to leave the facial details till the very end and get all the rest of the larger open spots filled in first. And I do that because sometimes it doesn't, uh, one dipping of your paintbrush does not cover the whole area and you don't want it really dark where like when you start the paint it goes on darker and then a couple more spots later it starts to lighten and I don't want that to be the case. I want to have it all kind of evenly colored as I put it on. I don't put it on the lips. I kind of leave those blank. All right, now I'm going to set this little one aside so that it can dry while I move on to her limbs. We're going to start on the limbs from the hands and the feet, the farthest part away from the flange so that I have the ability to hold the flange without it if I did up here first, I would be fine, but then I got down here and I would be boinging it and it would be flipping and doodling all over the place. So it has gives me the ability to steer it and control my limb if I start at the farthest part away from the flange holder.
There's a little spot right here. I put a little piece of lint. I wanted to get off so it doesn't dry on there. I'm going to let that sit on my drying rack. Okay, the last part are those feeties and the little legs. I'm kind of regretting taking pictures of this baby. This is the makeover baby. I'm regretting taking pictures or not taking pictures at the very beginning um, because I, I always forget to do that. I get too excited to see what I can turn them into and make them over into that I forget to take pictures of their before. So I'm hoping I can dig up some pictures of her as the before state from the person that I bought them from, bought her from, um, so that we can see when this baby's all done what she was before and now or in a little bit after. My drying rack, um, you can kind of see in the background, is a plate holder that I bought off of Amazon. Um, I have multiples of these, and for some godforsaken reason, my cats climb up on my table when I'm not working, and they chew on the nubs for some stupid reason. I'm not sure what pleasure it gives them, but they're little snot faces. Thankfully, they don't chew on my dolls because I'd have to murder them. Okay, so after this layer, I'm not going to bake it yet. Um, I don't like to bake the babies as much as possible because it doesn't do good things to the vinyl if they're cooked and cooked and cooked and cooked. So I have simplified my process down to only having to cook it as few times as possible to set the paint on layers that will smear each other off if I continue on. So the first few layers on this baby are going to be modelings, um, just like this, but different colors to build up the skin tones. And before I go from that to a wash, I will at that point cook it so that the first layers stay put. All right, so that's the end of this particular model, the purple. So I'm going to give it a few minutes and let it dry and then I'll come back with the red.